Welcome to another edition of Matthew's Mastercam Tips. Today's blog will be a video taken from our new course, 2D High Speed Dynamic Milling. This video is part one of five in the Dynamic Milling section of this course. This video covers the use of the Cut Order Optimization setting as well as the Cutting Method and Conventional Feed Rate settings. 2D Dynamic Milling, Part 1 In this video we will examine settings specific to the 2D Dynamic Milling toolpath and the effects of these settings on the resulting tool motion. 2D Dynamic has some familiar pages such as Depth Cuts, Breakthrough, Linking Parameters, etc. These pages appear in other operations such as Contour and Pocket, so you should be very familiar with their use. In this video we will focus mainly on the Cut Parameters page, and we will also cover entry methods on the Entry Motion page. Stock and Arc Filter will have their own videos later in this lesson, since they appear in several of the 2D High Speed Toolpaths. In this video, there are toolpath groups for each parameter that we will be exploring. Each group contains several toolpaths, and each of these toolpaths will have different values assigned to the group's parameter. For example, the Cut Order Optimization tool group has three toolpaths. All three of these toolpaths are the same except for the Cut Order Optimization parameter. The toolpath naming reveals how the parameter has been set. In this case, there are three options, Material, Air, or None. To make the differences in the toolpaths easier to see, it may be necessary to toggle the display state of the toolpaths. A good option is to enable the Only Display Selected Toolpaths button located at the top of the Toolpaths Manager. With this option enabled, only the selected toolpath or toolpaths will display in the graphics area. This will be useful in visualizing the differences each parameter has on the resulting tool motion. Select operation number 1 and its toolpath will show in the graphics area. Open this operation and switch to the Cut Parameters page. The Cut Order Optimization field is located in the lower right corner. Cut Order Optimization is used to control the cut order Mastercam applies to the different cutting passes in the toolpath. When the tool finishes a machining pass, it must select a start point to resume from. Material will start at the material that is the closest to the tool. None will start at the most recently machined material, and air starts nearest to the tool. Exit the operation and let's have a look at how this affects the toolpath. With OP1 still selected, begin a back plot. This OP is set to material. Once it completes a cut, it moves to the next closest material and continues from there. Exit the back plot and select OP2. Notice the change in the displayed toolpath. All parameters in this OP are the same as the previous except for the cut order optimization. Launch a back plot for this operation. This toolpath cuts in a slightly different pattern than the previous. Exit and repeat the back plot for op number 3. This operation has optimization set to none. The result is again slightly different than the other two paths. The more complex the shape of your part, the more dramatic effect this setting will have. One of the main benefits of this setting is reducing cycle time. Have a look at the estimated times for each of the three optimization options. For this part, it looks as though the air method results in a slightly shorter runtime. The next toolpath group shows the effect of changing the cutting method. Open the Cut Parameters page of OP4. The cutting method parameter is located at the top of the screen. Cut method sets the machining direction of the toolpath. Climb sets the direction of the cut to be opposite the tool rotation. 
Conventional sets the direction of the cut to be the same as the tool rotation. Zigzag allows both climb and conventional tool directions. Exit the parameters and launch a backplot. Backplotting OP4, this operation is set to climb and the tool travels around the part in a clockwise motion. Notice the tool's motion when it is machining the V portions of the face. Exit this backplot and launch OP5 into a backplot. This tool path is set to conventional and the tool travels around the part in an anti-clockwise direction, opposite of the previous operation. Backplot OP6 now. This operation is set to zigzag, which will allow both types of tool motions. The path starts out clockwise, but once a transitional area is encountered, the zigzag motion begins. Notice the tool motion in the V areas now. With the zigzag cutting method chosen, another option becomes available. In the backplot menu, notice the feed rate of the operation as it's cutting the V section and transitioning from climb to conventional cuts. With OP6, this feed rate is constant. Open the parameters of OP7. This OP is set to zigzag as well. With zigzag enabled, the field for the conventional feed rate can now be used. This allows setting a different feed rate for the conventional motion during this toolpath. Launch this backplot now. Notice the feed rate changing from 6 to 3 when a conventional path starts. The benefit of zigzag is to cut down on time when the machine is not cutting. However, sometimes conventional cutting is not ideal at the same feed rates as a climb cut. Being able to adjust this feed rate allows utilizing the zigzag motion while not damaging the cutting by overfeeding into a conventional cutting motion. We will continue this file in the next video.